I think that the distinguishing mark between a great investor and a not great investor is not merely how good the return was, but how much risk they took to get it. If you, you know, you can take, you can lever up an S&P, now, nowadays with derivatives or ETFs, you can buy an, e an ETF that goes up or down four times as much as the S&P, or maybe eight times. And if you, if you buy that, and you go into a very positive period in the market, you'll have an astronomical return, but it doesn't mean you're a great investor. Because it, they'll say, look at that guy. He went up eight times as much as the S&P. Well, guess what? If it had been a down period, he would have gone down eight times as much as the S&P. He added no value, he was not a good investor. I think that an exceptional investor is someone who has a good return disproportionate to the risk borne. A good return with the risk under control. Let us break down this idea with an example comparing your investment style to that of your neighbor. Picture your neighbor investing all his life savings into just one stock. And over the course of five years, he generated a return of 15%. Meanwhile, you invested all your savings into low cost S&P 500 ETF. And after five years, you generated a return of 12%. Even though your neighbor made more money than you did, he took a huge risk by putting everything into just one stock. And if that stock had crashed or the company went bankrupt, your neighbor would have lost all his savings. On the other hand, even though you earned 3% less, you did not put all your eggs into one basket. By investing in a well-diversified ETF, you did not expose yourself to the same risk of losing everything if that one company failed. So as Howard Marks said, being a great investor means generating good returns while minimizing risk.